Welcome back everyone to Learning with Teaching. Today we're in Dynamics and we're going to solve problem 12.58, okay? It says, a two-stage rocket is fired vertically from rest with the acceleration shown. After 15 seconds, the first stage A burns out and the second stage B ignites. Plot the VT and ST graphs which describe the motion of the second stage for times between 0 and 40 seconds, okay? So what we can see in this problem is that we are given the graph of the acceleration versus time of this rocket. And what we can see in this graph is that from 0 to 15, we got a linear equation. And from 15 to 40, we got our const uh, constant uh, acceleration. So knowing this, knowing that we have our acceleration graph and we can create acceleration equations from here, we need to know that in order to find velocity, well, how can we find velocity? We can find velocity by knowing that relationship that the acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time, okay? So if we solve for, for the change in velocity in here, we'll realize that this is acceleration times change in time. And if we implement integral on both sides, we'll find out velocity, okay? After finding velocity, we can also find position by knowing that velocity is equal to the change in position with respect to time. And we are going to do the same that we did for our velocity, where we saw for our change in position, which should be equal to velocity times the change in time. And if we implement integral on both sides, we will be able to find the position, okay? So let's start this problem. And let's we're going to separate this problem by the same way that the problem is the acceleration is being separated first from 0 to 15 and then from 15 all the way to 40 seconds okay so let's start with our time being from 0 all the way to 15 seconds and what do we know about our acceleration where well, our acceleration it's a linear which start at 0 meaning that our y-intercept is 0 and it's going 1 uh, as our slope is going to be rise over run, so one of our rise and for one of our run because we got 15 over 15, meaning that our acceleration in terms of time is equal to just one t or basically just t, okay? So now we have the acceleration, right? So we want to find our velocity and we're going to use what I explained before. So we're going to do that the integral of our change in velocity has to be equal to the integral of our acceleration times the change in time, okay? Now, we're going to do the integral for our change in velocity, and this velocity goes, well, it starts at zero because we're giving that this starts at rest, meaning zero acceleration, zero velocity, and zero position, all the way to our final velocity. We're going to call it V, just to simplify things. And then our acceleration, we can change it for T, since we know that our acceleration for this time is just equal to T. So we're going to have T dt. Now our time is there are zero seconds, and then all the way to our final time, that we're going to call it T, okay? If we solve this integral on the left, we will realize that this is going to be equal to V. And if we solve our integral on our right, we'll realize that this is equal to t squared divided by 2. Since our boundaries start at 0, meaning that both of them were like minus 0 and minus 0, but every number minus 0 is the same number. So that's our equation for our velocity with respect to time for our time between 0 and 15, okay? So now that we have our velocity, as I explained before, we're going to use this relationship in order to find our position, meaning that we're going to do this integral on both sides, okay? So if we do our integral of our change in position has to be equal to our integral of velocity times the change in time, then we're going to do the same. Well, on the left, we have the boundaries. Well, our position is that also a zero and our final position is, we're going to call it S of, and this has to be equal to the integral of, well, we can change this V 
as this v, right? And this v was equal to t squared divided by 2. Therefore, we're going to have t squared divided by 2 in here times dt. Now, if we solve both integrals on our left, we will end up with s has to be equal to t to the cube divided by 6, okay? And this is our equation for our position in, um, in our time between 0 and 15. Okay, so we're good for our first part. Now we need to solve our second part. And for our second part, we need to do our, and our time is between 15 seconds and 40 seconds, okay? What do we know about our acceleration? Where our acceleration between 15 and 40 is here and here, so if we look at the graph better, we realize that this is a constant that goes from here to here, and our constant is equal to 20. Therefore, our acceleration is equal to 20 for all this time, okay? We're going to implement the same relationship where we're going to do the integral of our change in velocity it has to be equal to our integral of our acceleration times the change in time. And we're going to solve for this. Now, what changes between this time and our initial time is that our initial velocity, so in, in our left side integral, our initial velocity is not equal to zero because we already have 15 seconds of our rocket being launched, right? So how do we know from which like from which boundary do we start this integral? And we know that because we start at our 15 second mark and we have an equation for our velocity for our 15 second mark in here, okay? So basically we can just plug in our our 15 seconds into this equation, okay? So let's just, let's do that in order to find our initial boundary for our second time interval. So I'm going to do it over here. Our velocity when our time is equal to 15 is going to be equal to 15 squared divided by two, okay? And let's see when we plug this into our calculator, 15 squared divided by two is going to be equal to 112.5 seconds, okay? So now we know that for our initial boundary in our left side is going to be 112.5. And our final velocity, again, we're going to call it V, just to simplify things, V for velocity. On our right side, we can change our acceleration for our 20 constant. So we have an integral of a constant 20 multiplied by dt. And our time starts from 15 all the way to our final time, that is t, okay? If we do this integral, we will have v with boundaries from 1, 12.5 all the way to v has to be equal to, and then we got 20t with boundaries from 15 seconds all the way to t. If we apply these boundaries, we'll get v minus 1, 12.5 has to be equal to 20t minus and then we will have 20 multiplied by 15 is equal to 300, okay? Our final goal is to find velocity in terms of time. Therefore, we're going to solve for our velocity and we'll end up with 20t minus, and then we will have 300 plus, because this negative is going to go to the other side, maybe coming a positive, okay? Sorry about that. So we got 300 and we got plus negative 300 plus 112.5 gets me negative 187.5, okay? And this is our equation for our velocity. And then what we're going to do is that we're going to do a, um, our, we're going to find our position. And we're going to find our position with the same relationship that we did on our first interval. So we got that our change in position, the integral of our change in position has to be the integral of our velocity times the change in time. Okay, so our position again. So our position also doesn't start at zero. We have already passed 15 seconds of this rocket being launched. So at what position are we? 
So in order to find that position, we got this other equation that works when our time is equal to 15, which is our initial on our second. So we can find, we're going to find our position at 15 seconds. And this is going to be equal to 15 cubed divided by 6. Okay, so we're going to plug that into our calculator. And if we do this, we're going to find out that our position at 15 seconds is going to be 562.5 meters. Okay, so now on here on our integral, we're going to put that we're starting at 562.5 all the way to our final position that we're gonna call s of our change in position and it has to be equal to our integral of okay so let's start by replacing this velocity with the velocity that we found for this time interval meaning that this is going to be 20 t minus 187.5 and all this is multiplied by change in time now our time goes from 15 all the way to our final time right these are the boundaries for our right side integral if we perform this integral on the left side we'll end up having s our integral is equal to s with boundaries from 562.5 all the way to our final position and this has to be equal to well we'll have two values two terms in here which is going to be 20 t squared divided by 2 and if we simplify this 20 divided by 2 it's obviously 10 minus 187.5 multiplied by t and we have the intervals that were from 15 all the way to t okay if we solve this by with our intervals with our boundaries we got s minus 562.5 has to be equal to 10t squared minus 187.5t minus, and then we're going to have 10 multiplied by 15 squared minus 187.5 multiplied by 15, okay? And we'll end up, if we solve for s, we'll have s is equal to, then our terms with t will stay the same, these terms in there, so we got 10t squared minus 187.5t and then we'll have minus and then the number if we, we're going to plug this number in here into the calculator this number that we got in here into the calculator so let's do that 10 multiplied by 15 squared minus 187.5 multiplied by 15 this is equal to negative it's negative 562.5 and we're going to do plus 562.5 that this 562.5 come from the left side that was negative then passes to the other side as positive okay therefore if we combine by turns we'll get 10 t square minus 187.5 t and then this minus with this minus become positive and then we add an extra number we'll have plus we got a thousand a hundred and twenty five okay so this is our equation for our position and now we have our equations we got our equations from for our velocity this is the first one that's the second one and same thing for our position we got our equation so we can start by graphing our vt and st graphs okay so we're going to have this is our 10 second mark therefore okay so this is going to be our 15 second mark and this is going to be our 40 second mark which is when our time changes this is going to be our velocity and time and for our between 0 and 15 we have our velocity well our velocity is v is equal to t squared divided by 2 so let's copy this equation and we're gonna put it here okay so we know that this is a t squared divided by 2 meaning that it's going to be like a parabola 
and it's going to look something like this. Okay, at this point, and our velocity at equals to 15 seconds, we already know that one, which we did before, which is equal to 112.5. Okay, so in our velocity is 112.5. Then our velocity for our 15 to 40 mark, we found it to be a linear. Okay, with a, our y-intercept being negative. So we need to take that into account and our equation should look something like, maybe like this, really steep where our y-intercept should be negative, okay? So something like that. And our velocity mark, so let's make, expand our graph like this. Our velocity mark, Okay, let's delete this. We don't need any more. Now what we can do is also find our velocity when our time is equal to 40 seconds. So let's do that. Let's move a little bit these things down and find our velocity. So let's do this velocity when our time is equal to 40. That should be equal to 20 multiplied by 40 minus 187.5. And if we plug this into our calculator, what do we get? We will get that this is equal to 612.5. Okay? So we know that our velocity in here is equal to 612.5. And this is our velocity, which is in meters per second. Okay, so we're done with our first graph. And our second graph is going to be our position graph. Okay, so we got our 15 second marking here. And this is going to be our 40 second marking here. Okay, this is our position, which is in meters. And what do we have? So let's go back and check our position between, like the equation for our position between 0 and 15 seconds, which is a quadratic equation, okay? Now, this quadratic equation should look something kind of similar to a parabola because it's a really small section of this equation that we are doing only between 0 and 15 okay and we know that our at our 15 mark this is equal to 562.5 meters so 562.5 meters and then our equation for our position for between 15 and 40 seconds is here, which is a parabola, and to look something like this. Okay, with our mark being in here. And then if we want to know what that position, when time is equals to 40, then we're going to plug in 40 for our time. We're gonna have 10 multiplied by 40 squared, minus 187.5 multiplied by 40, plus a thousand and twenty five okay so let's plug that into our calculator so we got 10 multiplied by 40 squared minus 187.5 multiplied by 40 and we got plus 125 1125 and our final position will be equal to 9625 okay so we found our velocity, so our velocity in here, this is our velocity and our position, okay? And this is our final answer. If you guys like the video, please push the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.